We're back at Moscone West, theCUBE's coverage of RSA 2023. A man who needs no introduction, John Chambers is here, friend of theCUBE. Great to see you again, thanks for coming David, on. David, it's a pleasure, John, to be with Great you to again. See you. So John, a, a question that John and I ask a lot of okay. executives like yourself, is security a do-over? Oh, now that's not the way I've had it framed before, so I'm going to buy a little bit of time to distract your audience if I get my answer <laughs> on it. Um, the answer is yes. I think security of the past uh, isn't going to work. Those were in silos, individual products, very complex, uh, required human intervention, uh, were not simple to use or install, but you didn't understand the benefits and able to quantify where you put your risk. Uh, I think you're going to see security of the future an architectural play, which thinks about it from where are you versus your peers, if you invest money, where should you invest, how does it lower your cyber insurance or work through it, uh, how do you prevent the attacks once they start to occur and shut them down quickly, how do you recover from them, et cetera, and that whole 360 degrees. So I think you're going to see a next generation of security leaders. Uh, you and I were teasing <laughs> earlier, John, about is security kind of boring something of the past. Yeah. Yeah. I would argue no, because you're going to see a whole new generation of leaders within it. Yeah. Security is set up for an architectural play. Nobody's been able to capitalize on it. And the only way you have security is for to not require human intervention and for the pieces to talk and communicate together. You know, the integrated system aspect of it is interesting. You and I have talked in the past, I know yes, in your previous job at the CEO of Cisco, they did a lot of networking. You got networking, packets, that's kind of footprints. You can see deep packet inspection, see what the patterns are. Yes. Modern applications now on top of containers and Kubernetes are cloud native. You have a lot of scale and speed, new code coming out and AI is at the center of it. Two years ago, you said AI is the next big wave. It's here. Yes. So you got new AI, you got network, more solid network yes. functionality, and these modern apps. The stack is now trying to be secure. What's your vision on this? Because you got AI driving a lot of change, but the packet's still got to move from point A to point B and be secure, and there's more of them. Well, John, you've asked about six questions <laughs> in the group, and let me uh, kind of answer it in the segments we went through. I, I think security of the future will be, as I alluded to, an architectural play. Uh, security companies today are primarily one product where they get 60, 70, 80% of their okay. revenues and most of their profits. Uh, I think you've got to think about security on how the pieces tie together and how they communicate across those. Mm -hmm. I'm fortunate enough to have nine security startups. Uh, we're on an unusually good quarter, and then, as you know, startups go up and down. <laughs> they have a problem every other yeah. week. But uh, out of the nine, uh, either in the most recently reported quarter uh, internally, or last year if they haven't reported this quarter, they're growing between 40 and 300%. Yeah. Now what that says, in an industry that's growing 10 to 12%, that's all security's yeah. growing, and while it might be slowing a little bit, which it probably is because of budget issues, uh, when you hit those elements, you're really with the next generation security players who make it simple to use, who use uh, voice recognition as the primary potential single sign-on for identity of the future who take a complex issue like how good is your security strategy for your company uh, that makes the CEO comfortable or the board comfortable and is able to explain it to you in multiple terms, what does this really mean to you? Uh, those type of things, I think, are the ones that interest people the most now. You know, when you look at investing in security companies or yes. in startups, you know this better than I do, when you look at the market, with the exception of Microsoft, they've got a big you know, security business, I guess, it's hard to tell, they're okay. kind of everywhere. <laughs> but no one company has more than you know, single digit market share, right? Now uh, when yes. you were the CEO of, of Cisco, you had, yeah. I think 60 plus percent market share, okay. right? And so, do you think that will change in the future? Uh, I think it has to, and uh, for mainly positive reasons. Uh, one of the things that I was taught early on by Jack Welch at uh, GE is he said, John, if you don't have at least 20% market share, especially in what he understood about technology companies, you don't have staying power. So to have a lot of players you know, in, in a security architecture where nobody has even 10%, uh, you're going to see a consolidation in that, and you're probably going to see a number of new generation leaders. I do think it's set up for one or two or three players to lead in this, and it could be a startup who just gets bigger yeah. and moves into market adjacencies yeah. and use the innovation engine to really go, or it could be one of the existing security players, a CrowdStrike, a Palo Alto Networks, a Cisco, 
that makes the transition. I'm betting either way I'll be okay. So it could be a company like Rubrics that is just on a tremendous growth range and a very high unicorn approaching double digits capability who decides to go into multiple other areas which I'd love to see Bipple do. Mm. Or it could be one of the startups that suddenly really scales dramatically and begins to piece it together or an existing incumbent who reinvents themselves. Now the problem with existing incumbents, it's hard to reinvent. You've got to get the next market transition right, that's when you gain share. So the business model on security is now going to be enabled by AI, and it's going to be enabled around simplicity, ease of use, how you purchase your stuff. And security has to be built in from the very beginning, it can't be an afterthought. You overlay security on an electrical grid, all you're doing is putting band-aids on it. It has to be designed from the beginning of how you do it. Same thing with networking with a company called Now, which Pankaj Patel is re leading. Uh, it's designed ease of use, it reduces dramatically your operational cost, mm -hmm. and it was designed for simplicity from the very beginning with zero trust yeah. built in from the very beginning. So until you get that in the supply chain, until you get it in the electrical grid, until you get it in the networks, you really don't have security of today. So there's going to be a new player yeah. here. I'd love to be a part of that. I'd love for him to buy my company, so I'd love <laughs> for one well, of my companies to be that, that mover. And John, you're investing a lot, as you mentioned earlier, which is great. And you, you've seen the market moves. We're in a market now that there are many people are saying, look, it's a shift. It's not on, like a market, well, you buy some companies, some white space, product roadmap, fill that in, buy it, integrate it in. This is a market where there's opportunity for revolutionaries to take big positions. New companies, startups coming in, and um, as my friend Jim Anderson, a, a VC, an old, old school VC said, some of the startups are, are ideas that no one gets or sees. Yes. It looks different. Yes. Is there, is there uh, something that you see out there that, that oh. you might be, that might be different? Because we don't, it's not a follow the herd mentality. I guess AI, they got yeah. that going on hype yeah. right now, but in these big movement, when these big market yeah. step functions, where yeah. there's a change of the guard, yes. there's always that company that no one gets. Yeah. Could be a little company, two guys out of Stanford, build a box to connect networks together, could be Airbnb type, no one, yeah. what is this company? What is that in your mind? This okay, new, yeah, a new. series of questions on it. Uh, first, I'll start with a way out there approach. You all remember I said voice would be free mm -hmm. and it destroyed mm -hmm. the, uh, my service provider customers were pretty upset with me saying that to enjoy <laughs> their revenues and their profits. But it was obvious it would be because it was such a small load on the internet that companies would give it away to get the data and get the video side. One that's unknown that I think is going to change dramatically and it's counterintuitive because of the deep fakes going on, especially with artificial intelligence, is the voice. You're going to be able to imitate Dave or John and yeah. you, I won't be able to tell it's not you. Yeah. However, if you really look at voice, it is broken up in a single second to 8,000 samples. And in five seconds, 40,000 samples can't be spooked. <laughs> and so all of a sudden, you're going to be able to see a company like a pin drop be able to say in voice, it may be the single ID sign-on. And wouldn't it be so nice starting your car or logging into uh, a call center uh, or the ability to get on an yeah. airplane where you're able to just say a couple of sentences and they get it. And before you say, well, John, that does work because of the AI capability and deep fakes, it's the reverse. Yeah. You'll be able to say very quickly, this was Dave, you'll be able to say no it was not, and it was another human, or you'll be able to say no, yeah. this was uh, engine machine driven, and the machines actually get a signature that you're able to associate with it. Yeah. So that's a way out there type of move. The second thing is that you're going to have a player like a small company like a safe that starts out of India and is growing at about 200% per year just on ranking uh, architecture for uh, how secure are you, where do you put your investments, yeah. et cetera, and then they have the courage to do yeah. cyber insurance tied to that, yeah, yeah. which gets a 360 going. Small company, couple hundred million in evaluation, just did a major finance run for, if you can imagine, 52 billion million dollars, yeah. uh, and they had seven term sheets. Clearly, that's yeah. something nobody's seen in the yeah. market. Uh, or you could have a now that rethinks networking with security, and they'll be doing a fundraise very, very shortly, and I think that will go extremely well as well. Maybe a way out player, you think of a Rubrics as a, uh, a storage system and backup, 
Well, they're now a security system yeah. and the best form of defense against ransomware there is. They kind of pivoted. They can move scary. in, they pivoted, yeah. they yeah. reinvented themselves. So those are the type of things, but I think yeah. it's most likely be players that weren't on people's radar screens two years yeah. ago. You're nice and giving me credit for AI saying two years ago it was going to cross the chasm. I said it six years ago, <laughs> a little bit early. Yeah. But to me, AI is going to be bigger than uh, the cloud and bigger than the internet combined. And I bet six years ago on AI companies, say ASAP or yeah, yeah. a Unifor or a Spark Cognition uh, or a Sprinkler. And so I think those are the exciting moves today that will create the next generation of You started investing in AI six years ago? Six years ago, what, I made so, five, majors, five major investments. So what time. did you see at the time and what's different now? Well what I saw at the time was that I felt it would be the next cloud, the next internet, both yeah. of which I did a pretty good job of seeing around the corners and then betting, not just saying yeah. here's what it was happening, but betting with it. And you could see customers, the really leading edge customers grasp the change here. And I saw yeah. how AI could completely change the customer experience for companies and their call centers, and that would be yeah. the first application, much like the internet's first application, could be as simple as entering orders online. Mm -hmm. And once you see that, you begin to connect the dots and the balance. And then everything I saw continued to build upon it. And so it's, it's classic, I'm What's around the customers. corner now in your mind? Because you got data, you got AI, clear, path there, I can see yeah. that. What's around the corner that, that, that you're looking at now that you're, you're connecting the dots on? Well, two things. First of all, I think you articulated very well who the winners are going to be in AI in part. It's about compute, then it's about the data, and the companies aren't going to give up their data. It's nice to have a chat GPT <laughs> uh, out there for the internet, but there's no way a given company, especially a security company or enterprise company, is going to give access to their data to others. Right. So it's the ability to really yeah. think about how do you use the data in an effective way, and then how do you do the logarithms, the AI piece of it, to really change things. So I think you're going to see a gold rush here. I think some of these companies, unfortunately, will get overvalued again. Our memory is remarkably short, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> like two months, <laughs> yeah. and, and uh, to suddenly wake yeah. up and say, well, I'm going to bet on the new player who's just starting with a new yeah. idea. If you didn't bet five and six and seven years ago, yeah. you're probably not going to be a player here long term. So it's going to be fun yeah. to watch how it shakes out. What's just around the corner, if somebody could get AI and cybersecurity together uniquely, yeah. that gets exciting. But every company's going to be an AI company. Yeah. Yeah. Every company's going to be digital. That means tech's here to stay, and the future looks very good. Question is, can the U.S. lead in this or not? Well, right. good question. I mean, what's your investment philosophy right now in terms of growth capital versus sort of early stage? How do you think about that? <laughs> well, I'm a little bit, uh, uh, over the board more than I'd like to be. I originally would say I'm a B-level B investor. Right. Once it gets up to C, D, E series, it's out of my pocketbook. Yeah. I invest all my funds myself with my, my uh, four partners together. Uh, I uh, today would actually say I'm investing earlier. I like the seed in yeah. Series A because I can grow them and I've seen the movies and I can pick the mix that I want. I can also pick diversity in the leaders. Three out of the last five companies have I added are headed up by female CEOs, which I think we need to do a much better job mm -hmm. of as an industry, yeah. especially the VCs. But my ideal target is a company that has a run rate of about two million that I know I can help them grow to 10, to 50, to 100. And so my goal is really not an investor, I'm more of a strategic coach, a partner, yeah. uh, an advisor, and a, a, a you know, somebody who's kind of there to listen on the tough Well, you got a, obviously you got the pedigree, and you're doing great work, and you're in the trenches. You mentioned Competitive USA, I want to get your thoughts on. Sure. A lot of young people I've been talking to, they're looking at our society and they go, you know, there's a lot of change going on, there's a lot of fears, there's a lot of recession, what's the future look like, global economy? What's the best way we can be more competitive as a country on the global stage, as intellectual property yeah. rights are being viewed at? You mentioned people aren't going to give us their data. That's, yeah. some are saying, we're saying on theCUBE, yeah. that's the new IP. Yeah. Be the AI, work with AI, but as uh -huh. a country, how do we, what's, What's the, what's the positive outlook and what are some well, steps we can let's take? Let's start with the challenges. Uh, there is no entitlement. You have to earn the position and Silicon Valley doesn't have that nor does the US, you have to earn it. We need a higher sense of urgency. However, we control our destiny more than anyone else. And so our destiny on the number of unicorns, what is it, 1,667, <laughs> probably a third aren't going to be unicorns a year from now, maybe yeah. half, but the number coming in, we grew last year at about 12%. China only grew three, four percent. India grew 22 percent. In fact, if you look at what is occurring in India, they had more unicorns created than China did. 
So a changing of the guard, perhaps in emerging markets, is very possible in terms of the direction. Uh, so I think it's all about this country being the best startup country, not just in Austin and Boston and uh, Atlanta and Silicon Valley, but in all 50 states. That's what I'm doing in my home state of West Virginia. You would say West Virginia, startup state. <laughs> Guess what was the number three startup state in the nation this last year? Really? <laughs> West Virginia, 90% growth in startups, industry average 27. Guess what state has the lowest unemployment in its history ever keeping track? West Virginia. Really? Guess Sounds like someone's been doing jo some work there. Joe Manchin yeah. for president there? Yeah, yeah Joe Manchin's yeah. quite I a person. You, Shelly Moore Capito is very yeah. good as okay. well. <laughs> a lot of good players. But what I'm saying is we took control of the state, changed the education, made it inclusive, got Democrats and Republicans. Shelly Moore Capito, a Republican. Joe Manchin, a Democrat. The governor, Republican. Mm -hmm. Speaker of the House, President of the Senate. Common vision. And we did things that people thought couldn't be done, and we moved from yeah. 45, 48 in every category to three, number six in GDP growth tied yeah. with Oregon. I mean, we're what's playing the, at a different the, level. What's the infrastructure there? I'm sure there's got to be great connectivity. Connectivity, internet access. The infrastructure is actually the people. Yeah. We had a common view. It's amazing what you can accomplish when you don't care who gets the credit, and people work toward a common vision and put aside their differences. I think the common infrastructure here is West Virginia's. Yeah. We're yeah. basically very good people. Yeah. Uh, we care about winning together. Uh, we try to do the right thing, and we had the courage to dream. We were the chemical center of the world, the coal mining center of the world, and yeah, I well. grew up. We perhaps have a chance to do it again, but it isn't West Virginia. We need to do that it's in all formula. 50 it's states. It's a formula. That's what I'm doing in France with Macron, as the, uh, his key global ambassador for high tech, and in India with uh, Modi. He calls me his global ambassador, <laughs> but I'm really the uh, head Great of the US-India Strategic Partnership Forum. Yeah probably the most strategic relationship in the world to the U.S. at the present time. Where are you on public policy right now? I, I presume you don't want to pause investment in, in AI. Uh, you're seeing, you know, FTC wants to break up big tech. We saw, we saw it today, Activision, the, the, the U.K. government is blocking, and I'm yeah. sure the you know, U.S. is not far behind. We kind of stopped the NVIDIA arm acquisition. Where, where do you think we are? It feels like the pendulum's swinging. Are you comfortable with that? Would you like to see a, a better public-private partnership? Well, I think there has to be a better public-private partnership. Let me be critical of my industry for a moment. Uh, during the 90s and the first decade of 2000s, we were a leader in the industry and the internet in a big way, and our peers and competitors were very good. We had no major issues in the European Union or in China mm. <laughs> or in the US or others, but we always were able to say what is the public policy goal that's fair and how do we work together as opposed to giving the Heisman move and stiff iron. Mm -hmm. uh, the big tech companies, uh, they brought this on themselves uh, and they didn't work with government for legitimate needs and you have to have, in my opinion, and that isn't all of them, but several of them did, you have to have a clear economic path, but you also owe an obligation to society. If you don't do both, on issues of privacy, fairness, et cetera, you're going to be regulated, and then antitrust will follow. Mm -hmm. Both the Democrats and Republicans told us this was coming. We didn't listen very well. So I think this is one where I think it's time for a gut check yeah, on yeah. terms of is yeah. high tech good for America? Yeah. My group at Cisco, 92% of Americans felt it was good. Yeah. Today, majority of Americans think it's not good. We have to re the public confidence. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't, you're going to see activities that come within it. Now to your question about AI and uh, do we need a pause, a lot of smart people said this, I don't know what they were thinking. The horse isn't out of the barn. Mm -hmm. Every horse in the world is out of the barn and in other countries. <laughs> uh, out of my 20 startups, 19 are AI companies today. Uh, pause is not an, not an option. That is so deeply inbred, it is the future of defense, it's the future of these companies, it's productivity. Yeah. You'd crash the system if you even tried to do this and it's not doable. So I think there is one where people have a legitimate concern. And the legitimate concern is we need guardrails and we need them quickly. But a pause was a non-starter non from the beginning, and I don't, I don't, I don't understand why people th even thought that was a viable option. Yeah, I, I agree. I so they even can catch very up. few political leaders. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're another country and want to catch up, mm, yeah. uh, or if you're an existing incumbent that doesn't have a good strategy in AI, perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. But this is one. It, it, you know, disruption waits for no one. Yeah. So we better lead, and we better get the right guardrails. Well, up. the height. Do, the height do, you, think it's, do you think it's US one, the rest of the world zero right now? Or oh, no, are, are we, are I think we, this is uh, a a jump ball, <laughs> uh, okay. and let's Regain. use cybersecurity as an example. Are 80% uh, of the unicorns in cybersecurity in the U.S.? Yes. 
Do we have a good chance to play this one well? Yes. Will we play it well enough? I don't know. Uh, on AI, it's much more of a jump ball. There's a lot of technology going on around the world in this area, including deep fakes, yeah. uh, road country espionage, Mis et cetera. Misinformation, disinformation. Yeah. yeah, if you look at it, you know, use China as an example, and I believe in the long run, U.S. and China should learn to work together, and I think that will eventually come back. But in the short run, it's clearly going to be extremely bumpy uh, in terms of the direction. And you have to have intellectual property protection per your comments. You have to have the capability uh, to say, if the U.S. is going to lead in defense, we better lead in AI and cybersecurity as we move forward. Yeah. And at the present time, even using the U.S. Defense Department slash reports that I saw, China leads the U.S. in probably 15 of the 20 most important areas. Two, we can't lose AI and cybersecurity. John, you always bring the energy and the okay. insight. Thank you so much for joining us yeah. again on theCUBE. Yeah, John and John. I really <laughs> enjoy our time with you. John, thank, thank, you. thank you, John, appreciate thank it. You. All right, keep it right there. We'll be back with theCUBE's coverage, RSA 23 from Moscone. You're watching theCUBE. <laughs>